Stocks may be lower again today, but they've still had quite a run this year, with the Dow and the S&P up about 10 percent. There are lots of lingering concerns out there, though. Rising bond yields, inflation, valuations, COVID concerns still. Let's talk about the risks and rewards in this market now with legendary investor Bill Miller. He's the chairman and chief investment officer of Miller Value Partners. Bill, it's great to have you back. Uh, the Miller Opportunity Trust is up 17 percent year-to-date, outperforming the S&P. And you guys, I know, are up multiple times over, I think, since the bottom last year, which you called on this show about a week before it happened. So before I get into all of that, Bill, I, I just read that you guys sold out of your GameStop. Is that true before the big run-up in January? That you, you had the same narrative as all the retail crowd, but but they they were just a little too late, I guess, for you. Yeah, well, we, we have uh, GameStop in our deep value product, and um, I think our cost on it was around four or something. Oh. And when it got into the 70s is when we sold it. Then it, of course, went to 400. <laughs> but still, try to time that top. I mean, if you bought a four and sold at 70, it doesn't sound like it's a disaster. Do you have any opinion on that stock now or any of these other kind of so-called meme stocks? Um, they're, they're not of interest right now because they're, they're sort of in the, in the grip of uh, the Reddit uh, crowd. And they're not it's not you're not able to actually analyze them in the same way that you would other other things because the price is dominating the fundamentals. Well, one uh, interesting characteristic of this market, especially as the rally goes on, is what's happening to the short sellers. So there was a great piece recently about what's been going on with Chainos Fund and some of the other major players in this space. Uh, their assets are dwindling. It's been a really difficult environment to short in, right? I mean, and, and you're often on the other side of a lot of these cult favorites. You guys don't mind taking the risk of, I mean, you have companies like Farfetch in your top holdings. You've been an Amazon holder forever. Um, so what do you think happens as this rally goes on if, if short selling is literally becoming to some extent unprofitable or maybe they've just been betting on the wrong sectors? Well, well short selling is always a tough, a, a tough thing because the market goes up about 70 percent of the time, 70 percent of the year, 70 percent of the months. And, uh, and, of course, if you're short and it goes against you, your name goes against you, then it becomes a bigger problem, a bigger part of your portfolio, whereas if you're long and you're wrong, it's a smaller part of your portfolio. So it's, a, it's mathematically a very difficult, a, a difficult way to make a living. And so wait, on the long side, what names are you interested in right now? Um, are you looking sort of through the lens of the post-pandemic period? Um, are there any emerging technologies or growth companies that you think are still attractive? Because we have been at kind of a lull with some of the higher multiple areas of this market for the last few months. Yeah, I mean, I think the market is uh, the market's roughly fairly valued right now, which means that there's a probably a, a roughly even spread between the names that are that are too expensive and the names that the names that are too cheap. Um, you know, we, you mentioned Farfetch and we had Stitch Fix last year; those were some of our, our big winners. Farfetch is up, I think, eight times uh, from what we paid for it just about just about a year and a fraction ago. And so those those names have corrected. They're still expensive on a on a short term basis, but again, we're we're not in them for the we're not in them for the short term. I think in the SPAC area, which I think that game is largely winding down now, hmm. and many of the SPACs that came public came at, at extraordinarily expensive valuations. But now, now they've, some of them have corrected, like um, oh, a company called Desktop Metals, for example, that we, that we owned. It was 30, and now it's, now it's 11. And that's a company that is in additive manufacturing. So it's, it's, like, the, it's like 3D printing, but, but the next wave of that. So we think some of those SPACs are, are, are attractive. Metro Mile, an insurance company, next, next wave insurance company, is uh, seven right now. So we, we, like, uh, we like that one. And then there's, there's some valuation discrepancies in the overall market. I mean, I, I think that the big names, the big, the big fang stocks are all pretty attractive. But attractive. something like um, Attractive, yeah. You know, Amazon, Amazon, Alphabet, Facebook, you know, we, we own them. We don't own Apple anymore. We should have, we should have kept it. But <laughs> I, think, I think they're all fine. But a name like a name like Varum, which is a, a used car uh, seller over the internet, has a five billion dollar market cap with a management team that was part of what built Bookings.com, which is a hundred billion dollar market cap company. Carvana is the leader with a forty five billion dollar market cap, and Varum is about three years behind Carvana with a with a much higher return on capital hmm. model. So that's a name we think you could make multiple times your money in the next in the next three or four years. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.